This is one of sport's great proving grounds, a gateway to glory. Brilliant. 29 tournaments spanning 19 countries. Along the way, a chance to expand horizons and sample life on tour. How beautiful is that? There you go. Finish the season in the top 20 on the road to Mallorca rankings and secure a golden ticket to the DP World Tour. This is the Challenge Tour. Scotland, our destination this week on the Challenge Tour and the very birthplace of the game. A country that's rugged terrain and natural beauty has helped shape many a golfer's career. It's also provided the backstory to the man under our spotlight this week, Hamish Brown. The name gives a lot away. I'm, I'm born and bred in Denmark, but I've, I've got a Scottish father who, uh, who obviously thought that was a good idea for the name, and I'm quite happy about it. Uh, I've always had this as a second home, basically. Um, I haven't been here too much the last few years, but uh, it's a second home for me and still is, but I don't see enough of it, I think. It's the birthplace of golf. Um, I think every golfer should, should be glad to be here when, when they are. And it's, it's a little more special because I know a lot of people over here. Um, every time I play in Scotland, it's, it's just nice. It's, it's a bit different than playing anywhere else. I got my uh, first plastic set when I was about that tall, I guess, and uh, smashed that around for a bit. And then I wanted to uh, go see Daddy at work, which was obviously at the golf club. And then it just trickled from there. When I was very young, we moved out on the golf course where my parents still live. I, I don't anymore. Um, so I basically had a golf course in my backyard, and that's probably helped me a lot to get to where I am today. And um, I'd say I was probably a better chipper when I was about 10, but. Uh, it's, it's given me a lot, and I've spent too many hours out there. Brown on the final hole, and he claimed his main win on the Challenge Tour with a 63 and a round that he'll never forget. Obviously, it's, it's been great. I've had a very consistent year. Not really too many bad rounds of golf, but just a nice, steady progress. Last year was, was hard. I didn't, didn't play great all year, and it was my first year out here. And, my first year really of professional golf and I, I got my fair beatings and I'm, I'm glad I got them today but uh, it was hard last year and I, I knew what I had to change and I'm still working on it, it's not done yet, um, there's more to do but it's, it's, been, it's been really good and I'm, I'm in a good spot right now and just looking forward to what the rest has in store. And the journey continued for Hamish at the Farm Food Scottish Challenge, supported by the R&A. Newmarket Golf Club played host, the Hawks Hill course to be precise. Designed by renowned architect Dave Thomas, alongside Peter Alice, the 6,700 yard layout looks set to challenge all comers. And heading into the week, our man Brown was feeling comfortable in his surroundings. How was your evening, good? Nice and easy. Didn't do too much. Hit the gym when I got back. Relax and relax a bit more. Yeah. Good. Yeah. All right, Joshy. Good new. It, it is the business end of the season, and it's now where you've really got to stick to what you do and do your stuff and make sure you're taking off your boxes. And if you do that and you do that with intent and the right professionalism in, in my mind it's probably going to go OK. And if it doesn't, it doesn't. But that's, that's just the game. You, can, you can't control the outcome. You can only control the effort. And if, if I control my effort the right way, I'm, I'm fairly confident in good things. But I can, I can say a lot, but it's got to be done. And business this week conducted on the unique Aberdeenshire fairways. I like it. Um, I remember it a little different last year, the course. I, I didn't play great last year. Um, I finished level, I think, and went home after two days. Um, trying to not do that this this week um, but it, it's it's a good track and it's it's a little different from a usual like parkland course it's a bit firmer and uh, a little more linksy sort of um, you've got some like it's not pot bunkers but it's revetted bunkers and runny fairways hard greens and I, I quite like it actually it's a different a different golf course than what we're used to and I think it's going to put out a good test especially if the wind gets up a little bit it's going to mess with people's heads 
it's not over yet, and I, I have to mention that to myself quite a lot and stick to what I what I need to do to to make me play the best best golf. And I don't like relaxing. I'm I'm not done in my head. Uh, when I get to a certain number, I'm done. Then I can say okay, ease out. But I'm I'm not gonna rest till I hit that. And it's it's a part of it, and it's. It's something that fills in your head if, a lot if you think too much about it, but if I need to play my best golf, I need to stick to my tasks and put my proper effort in. And if that happens, it's good things usually happen at some point. And, but it is, it, is, it is a big deal. It fills, fills out your brain a lot because you know what's coming with it and what's possible. Thursday morning and to round one, in Scotland. On the tee from Denmark is Hamish Brown. And it was an impressive start for Brown. Birdie at the par five second, immediately thrusting him into the leading pack. It certainly seemed as though the relaxed start to the week was paying off. Yeah, beauty man. <laughs> Another birdie putt rolled in with ease to go to two under after five. But if, even if it goes a few past, it's not the end of the world. So just a little flighted one there, yeah? Two holes later, and Brown taking his caddy's advice to great effect. The Dane dialed in. Yeah, lovely. Seven holes played, three under par. He couldn't really have asked for a better start. Despite a drop shot at the ninth, Brown would make amends two holes later with this on 11. There would be another gain at the par 5 16th, leaving this at 18 to finish up the day at four under par in fifth spot and just two behind the leaders. Well, I did really well today. Didn't have many hiccups and but yeah, decent day's work and three more of them and I'm, I'm happy. Just stick to my tasks. I, I get way too, way too far ahead of myself sometimes and it's, it's only Thursday. I mean, you don't win a golf tournament today, but you can lose it. So just get myself in position, set up chances and see what happens. And I, I did that fairly well today. A new day and a fresh challenge awaiting. Time for day two then at the Farm Food Scottish Challenge, supported by the R&A. Our man Hamish Brown, perfectly positioned as he teed it up on the 10th, just two shots off the lead. Perfect. And after a solid par on his first hole of the day, he was in business on 11. The subsequent birdie of foregone conclusion, Brown dialed in early. Another birdie on the 16th was followed up by this moment of magic on the subsequent hole. It would get him to seven under for the tournament. Brown was in the groove, seemingly at ease in his spiritual homeland. There would be a further gain at two, his 11th, before another perfectly weighted putt on the par three sixth saw him join the leaders at nine under. He would give one back on eight, but overall a job well done for Brown. Better than yesterday, uh, tougher conditions today, windy all day. Um... Putting's not very easy either in this in this wind, so I'm I'm very happy all in all. So there's still 36 holes left, and 
just got to stick to my task and see where I end up. It's easy saying, hard to do. Um, obviously, I want to do well, and I, I feel like I'm in a good spot to do it. So it's guns blazing and see where we go. The men to beat after 36 holes included Scotland's Jack McDonald, a Friday 67, enough to see him alongside Denmark's Lucas Bjerregaard at the top. Brown in a share of second at eight under par. Coming up, a major winner working to grow the game in his homeland. The idea is to have a pathway for these players to progress onto the main tour eventually. And we'll crown a champion at the Farm Food Scottish Challenge, supported by the R&A. We'll see you soon. Welcome back to the Challenge Tour, where it was all to play for after two rounds of the Farm Food Scottish Challenge, supported by the R&A. Jack McDonald and Lucas Bjerregaard led the way with a trio of players, including Brandon Robinson-Thompson and this week's featured player Hamish Brown, hot on their heels. So, as thoughts turned to the weekend, the main prize was still very much up for grabs. Picking up the action on moving day, Josh Antman. Brandon Robinson Thompson started the day one shot off the lead but made inroads early in round three. He birdied the second and then birdied the third. First top ten of the season last week at the Irish Challenge for Robinson Thompson. Another making early moves on Saturday was Jonathan Caldwell. He had a birdie on four and then this right to left putt on five just getting there. Back to back birdies for the Northern Irishman. Callum Fife, mainly playing on the Tartan Pro Tour, the man from Glasgow. This was his approach at 13. He had five birdies up to this point on Saturday, and that would be birdie number six for the Scot. Brad Robson Thompson was just off the green at five. It was a hat trick of birdies up to this point. Make that four in a row for Robinson Thompson. He'd lead by two early in round three. Already a winner on the Challenge Tour. That was last season at the Irish Challenge. Already a winner this year at the Cascada Challenge. Hamish Brown from Denmark. He's had a fantastic season already. This was his approach at seven. Flag just blowing slightly, but an incredible approach there from the Danish player. Hasn't missed a cut all year. And that form has seen him get inside the top five of the Road to Mallorca rankings. Converted the birdie there to get to 11 under par. Now just one back of Robinson Thompson at this point. Brandon Robinson Thompson, he went out in 29 shots in round three. But the low scoring was not done there. Perfect drive at 14, just a wedge in. Controlled the spin. Another birdie for the Englishman. He was going for a low one in round three. Final birdie of his third round for Hamish Brown. Came at the 16th. Yeah. Using all of the hole. It was a 66 for the Dame. And put him just about in touching distance of Robinson Thompson. But Robinson Thompson, he finished like a train. A birdie at 16 was followed up by this birdie at 17 to get him to 16 under par. Robinson Thompson was having some day out there at New Macca and he had one birdie left in the tank. On the last hole, about 10 feet for birdie, he would convert for his 10th birdie of the day and it would add up to a sensational 62 from Robinson Thompson. Yes, what a great day at the office for Brandon Robinson Thompson. That 62, opening up clear daylight between him and his nearest rival, Hamish Brown. A 65 from Norwegian Christopher Raytan, keeping the 26-year-old in touch with the leaders, heading into the final round. But the day belonged to BRT. Usually when it's gusty and windy like this, it's difficult to putt also. Um, maybe the wind died when I was on the greens, but it's, they, they seem to go in. I wouldn't have expected the square shot today standing on the first tee, but it's golf and you never know.
So close to his birthplace, it was no surprise to see the 1999 Open champion Paul Laurie at Newmaco Golf Club as he continues to try and help the game flourish here. Tartan Pro Tour came about when COVID hit initially. The Euro Pro year was cancelled and there was no events for a lot of the players um, at the lower level, my son being one of those. Um, unless you were a PGA person and playing in their events, you couldn't play anywhere. So we thought, right, let's let's lay on some 36 old tournaments for, for, for these uh, male and female we ended up going. And they were, they were popular, obviously, because there's nothing else to play in. And then as soon as kind of COVID was over, we made the schedule a bit bigger and had more tournaments. And then we went to 54 holes um, the, the second year. And then this year we're, we've gone 54 holes with a cut and the European Tour group have very kindly given us two spots off the order merit for the top two players to get a full Challenge Tour uh, category. That tour has progressed you know, very, very quickly. It's only three or four years old. It's amazing how quickly we've managed to get that to the level that it's at. And again, a hugely vital tool for the players to kind of show that they can come through that tour and get a game this week and get a game in other Challenge Tour events. So, it, again, a lot of work, you know, for the team, but man, it's been brilliant. Well, the way the Challenge Tour works, you, you, you get 50 invites, you know, with your event, and then you swap them with other countries and other tournaments, so that gets your players in other events. And the players are allowed seven invites of a maximum, plus their national tournament. So if you manage a player and you've got an event, you get eight events, you know, per player. So this tour is it's a great way of doing it. It's a great way of getting players on there. Um, and it gives us an opportunity, because of the Tartan Pro Tour, to use invites for that tour as well, for winners and people that have played that tour. So it's a, it's a hugely vital tournament for us. It's a big event for us. It's the biggest event that we've got. But it's a very important event for us and our players and, and other Scottish players to kind of try and get themselves up the pathway. Obviously the way the Challenge Tour works for the invites to get our players into more Challenge Tour events, it would be great for us to have this event. We've got quite a few of the team you know, here this week. The idea is to have a pathway for these players to progress onto the main tour eventually. And so to day four in Scotland, and near perfect conditions, the players were poised for a potentially thrilling finale at Newmacker, as they attempted to reel in runaway leader Brandon Robinson Thompson. Watching was Josh Antman. It was a four shot lead to start the day for Brandon Robinson Thompson. He'd already picked up a shot at the par five second. Another fabulous approach there into the third. We've seen a lot of that already this week. It was a good move made by Robin Williams on Saturday after a 65. And the South African picked up where he left off with a birdie at the first to get to double digits. Having an excellent season, Robin Williams. Perfect conditions on Sunday. And Robinson Thompson was making things look incredibly easy. Converted that part on the third for two birdies in a row. He was now five shots clear of Hamish Brown. Callum Fife began the day in a tie for seventh and produced this birdie at the very first hole to make an early move on Sunday. The closest challenger to Robinson Thompson was Hamish Brown. He birdied the second. Here on the fifth, he was five back at this point on Sunday. Good controlled wedge there, hands up from Christopher Raytan. Crowds were out in force, enjoying the conditions on Sunday at Newmacker. Brown converted for birdie at five to get within four of Robinson Thompson on a scintillating run of form in the last month of Dane. Two birdies and no bogeys up to this point for Jonathan Caldwell. Eagle effort there at 16. It would be his final birdie of the day. 68 for the Northern Irishman and a tie for fourth, his best result of the season so far. Any chance Brown had of catching Robertson Thompson was halted by bogeys at eight and 10, but he did pick one up here at 12. He would card a final round of 70 and he'd be his fourth top five of the season for Hamish Brown. Robinson Thompson, he finished Saturday in style and he was at it again on Sunday. A birdie there at 16, 
He could just start to enjoy himself with two to play. An excellent weekend from Robin Williams. 10 under par over the two days and his final birdie on Sunday came at 17. Third place finish on his own and into the top five on the road to Mallorca rankings. Robinson Thompson was now on cruise control. He could enjoy the last couple of holes and enjoy them he did. This birdie on 17 put him seven shots clear with one to play. Crowds knew they were watching something special and despite all the birdies during the week, Robinson Thompson fancied another. This is approach at the final hole. Another laser-like iron almost holding out for Eagle. Four foot left on 18 for Robinson Thompson. It would be a hat trick of birdies to finish 22 under par. An utterly dominant display from Robinson Thompson as he picked up his second Challenge Tour title in style. Confirmation then of that truly commanding performance from Brandon Robinson Thompson. A second Challenge Tour title and a major step toward claiming that all-important DP World Tour card at the end of the season. Another impressive showing too from Hamish Brown, though fully eight shots back in second. But a week in Scotland clearly belonged to an Englishman. It feels very good. A little lost words at the moment, just to get it done by such a margin too. Um, maybe you could call it redemption from last week. I didn't think I did a whole lot wrong um, in Ireland. But finishing like that, just to sort of seal the deal was, yeah, really nice. A look at the road to Mallorca rankings then, and Hamish Brown's continuing good form sees him jump into third spot. Rasmus Nearguard peterson still leading the way, Robin Williams still upwardly mobile, and that resounding victory sees Robinson Thompson into the top ten. Further down, Pierre Pinot's top five finish in Scotland sees him rise into the all-important top 20. He sits at 19th, one place ahead of French compatriot Benjamin Hébert. And with that, our three-week challenge tour stint in the British Isles has come to an end. Up next, it's the Scandinavian swing, with back-to-back -back events in Finland and then Sweden. So join us next time as the long and winding road in pursuit of promotion to the DP World Tour continues.